Guys, painting skin is easier than you think. And not just painting skin, actually painting anything is easier than you think. If you break it down better and you understand how to blend colors together and how to achieve that level of detailing that your reference has. So in this video, I'm going to show you just that. I'm going to show you how painting anything, especially skin, is really, really easy. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into the video. So the first thing in every painting is creating a good base, especially if you're looking for a realistic kind of look. You need to make sure that your line art is minimal, just like I've created here. I've created this line art just to guide me while I place all the colors, but it shouldn't be very prominent. It shouldn't be dark. It should be just minimal lines just to guide you. And the way we create base is obviously I'm picking up colors from this reference and placing it exactly as it is placed on the reference. But as artists, we should also learn how to actually pick colors on your own without picking it from the reference because it, you're painting digitally here. But what happens when you're painting something traditionally? That is something I will teach you guys in a separate video. But I want you to, for this instance, pick colors from the reference only because that is not our focus here. Our focus here is to realize that how easy it is to paint anything digitally. So to create a good base is always to make sure, especially if you're creating something realistic, picking exact colors or colors closer to the reference and placing them exactly where they appear on the reference itself. Okay, that should be your first step. And that's what I'm doing here. Obviously, it takes a little bit of time, but it's actually it actually pays off later on and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that should be your number one step, creating a good base, which means nothing but picking exact colors from the reference or colors closer to them and placing them exactly where they appear on the reference. And the more colors you pick, the better the base is going to be. So that's Step number one, creating a good base. But our base is not ready yet. We only have added the colors here. Next step is to actually blend them. And for that, I'm using Tattoo Inker, and this is the brush I use to place the colors as well. I'm changing it into a smudge brush to smudge the colors together. Now to smudge colors together is not to like wash it out completely. What you need to smudge here is the line, is the intersection line. The line where two colors are meeting each other is where you want to blend, all right? That's the only part you want to blend, nothing else, because we don't want to wash out the colors. We want to make sure we are keeping the pigmentation of the colors we placed. So wherever you see intersection of two colors or three colors together, you're going to blend that in circular motion. And how you do that and what is the circular motion I'm talking about, I have a video on that, a separate video on that, but that is what blending is just blending the intersection of two or more colors all right that's it that's how you want to do it and always want to make sure that the opacity of the brush the smudge brush you're using is really low again because we don't want to wash out the pigmentation we have right so that's what you want to do we're going to just make sure that there are no harsh lines and we still need some harsh lines all right we want a balance of harshness and softness so you kind of want to blend it in a way where it's not completely soft yet it's not completely harsh and also you have to also make sure you're constantly looking at the reference and making sure you're not blending out any harsh shadows any shadow or any color that appears to be harsh or that appears to have harsh edges around it on the reference you want to make sure you're blending it in a way where you're keeping its harshness i hope this is making sense so this is step number one creating a good base and i will like fast forward this clip just to show you guys how i what i ended up with what kind of base i ended up with and how it actually made the rest of my painting that much more easier the next step is nothing but to add missing colors so when you blend colors together sometimes what happens is you do lose a bit of pigmentation of some of the colors you've already placed so here what we're doing is we're just making sure that the base is not looking washed out so for that what we do we now pick a brush which won't require us blending it so i'm picking up airbrush and i'm also making sure i'm putting light pressure whenever i fill in 
any color which were washed out while I was blending them so that's what I'm doing here is just that I'm adding the missing colors or if I think I can add more pigment to some colors I'm doing just that and as you guys must have seen I've also defined the nostrils a lot more because when I was blending them I ended up having a washed out kind of nostril. Again, this step is nothing but adding more pigmentation to the colors who lost their pigmentation because of blending. And that's it. That's step number two. Just to make sure we have a really good base for us to add the detailing. But as you guys can see, it's already looking really good and we haven't done anything yet. All we have done is we have placed the colors exactly where they appear on the reference and we have blended it. We have blended it in a way where we're not losing on the pigment. And even if we lost some pigment, we are adding it back. That's all we have done. And the painting is already looking so good, already looking quite realistic. Now we're gonna move forward and move on to the next step, which is nothing but adding details to complete this painting. In my case, the detailing here is nothing but freckles and highlights. So I focused on adding freckles. Now I want to actually study freckles like separately in my own time because I was not completely happy with the freckles that I created on this painting. All I did is I picked, I guess, airbrush or tattooing curve, doesn't matter because I ended up blending the freckles. I basically tapped onto the screen to create this freckle kind of texture with the brown color and then I went ahead with a colorless brush to blend them just so that they don't look crazy and that's how I created freckles and I decreased the opacity of the layer but I wasn't completely happy so I'm just gonna study them separately and come up with another video as to how to create realistic freckles because they didn't look realistic but I was okay with it because I wasn't really going for super realistic look for this painting Another part of detailing for this painting is highlights. And I, again, picked a white color and placed it wherever I saw highlights being placed in the reference as well. And then I blended it really lightly because I wanted to keep the harshness of the highlights that I created because it just looked incredible. But yeah, that's literally it. That's how easy it is to paint anything on Sketchbook, anything on any app for that matter. Once you know how to actually do it, once you like, if you have a good base, and you've given your all when it comes to creating a base everything else the rest of the process becomes that much more easier as you guys just saw that's how easy it was like if you follow this process that i've shown you guys here you will end up with a similar result like that's my guarantee to so give it a try and if you do tag me on instagram i would love to see if this process worked out for you or not but yeah i know this video helped you and i will see you guys in the next one